What's up guys, welcome back. It is finally peach cobbler cheesecake time. If you've been following me on social media, you know this recipe has been highly requested and today we're gonna make it happen. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, enough of the talking, let's get in there and get to cooking. We're starting with our peach cobbler, which means we need peaches. Not one, not two, but three. Check out the hands on that guy. Go ahead and break out your peeler or a sharp knife, whatever works best for you. Just don't cut yourself, please. The channel doesn't have insurance quite yet. But yeah, there's more than one way to peel a peach, so whatever you're most comfortable with, by all means, do your thing. The goal is to just have them peeled. Man, look how juicy that peach is. Jesus. If you're not into peaches, one, you're crazy, but two, feel free to substitute with apples if that's more of your thing. Apple cobbler cheesecake, probably just as delicious. I'm definitely gonna find out. That sounds great, actually. All right, we have three beautifully peeled peaches here. It's time to break out the knife and give them a slice. We're looking for about half inch thick pieces. If you want them a little bigger, no big deal. Just go around the core of the peach. Try not to waste anything. It's hard to beat a nice, ripe, juicy peach. Gotta taste one or two. That's a good peach, man. All right, enough eating on the job. Let's get back to it. As I said earlier, just a real rough chop. No need to be but so precise here. Just rock your knife back and forth until you have all of your peaches as evenly diced as possible. And then it's time to get started on our cobbler. Not before I taste one more peach. There we go. All right, now we can get started. You want to put your skillet on medium and add about a tablespoon or two of butter. Melt that butter down and then we're going in with our peaches. We're going to start caramelizing them a bit. As the peaches begin to cook, they'll begin to release some of their natural sugar. And then of course, we're going to hit it with plenty of unnatural sugar as well. There we go. As always guys, all the specific measurements and ingredients are in the description below. Going in with some cinnamon, a little nutmeg, some pure vanilla extract. Give that a nice mix. Allow all those flavors to get to know each other. You can see some nice caramelization there. This is looking like a Diabetics Anonymous meeting. Going in with just a pinch of salt. You wanna taste as you go and adjust the flavors as needed. Uh-oh, the star of the show, one shot of cognac. I used to be a Hennessy guy once upon a time, but use whatever cognac works for you. You could even use bourbon here as well. Grand Marnier would be good also. But just mix in that alcohol and let it cook off. Next, we're gonna make what's called a slurry, which is basically mixing in our cornstarch with our water, whisk until smooth, and then we're gonna pour that into our mixture, thicken things up a bit. Just keep mixing as you pour to make sure that nothing clumps up. You don't want any lumps or anything like that. Your heat's still on about medium, medium, low. You want a low simmer here. Damn, that looks good. Once it coats the back of your spatula, you know it's nice and thick enough. Then you can place it into a mixing bowl and pop it into the refrigerator or the freezer for 15 to 30 minutes, just to chill it off a little bit. While that is cooling off in the freezer, it's time to start on our crumble. We're using some white cake mix and some golden grams. Of course, a little melted butter, followed by some brown sugar. And then you just wanna get in there with your hands and toss everything together, make sure that they're well coated. This is gonna make a delicious crumble, provide a little texture and some flavor, of course. 
once your golden grams are well coated put them onto a baking sheet as you see me doing right here and then we're going to pop them in the oven to bake a little bit and get nice and crispy for us to crumble them up later now it's time to make our graham cracker crust we're going to use an entire package of graham cracker crumbles or crumbs along with some white sugar some more cinnamon a pinch of salt and plenty of melted butter again guys specific measurements are in the description below now get in there and mix all that together the spatula wasn't doing the job so I got in there with my hands you want to be able to squeeze it and see it take shape so I'm trying to demonstrate that for you right here almost like wet sand that's what you're looking for now spray down your cheesecake pan I guess that's a cake pan whatever and then go in with your crumbs and press down firmly make sure to coat the bottom evenly I like a nice thick crust but feel free to adjust based on your preference use the back of your hand to press down make sure that it's all firmly in place This is an area where you do want to be a little bit more neat and careful just so your cheesecake turns out nice and pretty. Once you have your bottom in place, it's time to go around the sides and just repeat that same process. This is usually where my wife takes over because I get frustrated not the most patient guy in the world but I made it through there you can see my wife's hand right there thanks babe all right now it's time to take out some of the frustration from making your crust break out the mallet and break up your crumble into nice fine pieces now we're gonna add a ridiculous amount of cream cheese to a mixing bowl along with an equally ridiculous amount of sugar and some flour, some vanilla extract. Break out the mixer from the 9.9 into 2000. No kidding, this, this mixer is at least 15 years old. All right, we're gonna mix in two eggs at a time. You don't wanna put them all in at once. Let's make sure that everything is well incorporated. Add a few more eggs and keep on blending. We're also going to add two egg yolks. Leave me a comment if you did not know cheese was in cheesecake. I know there's somebody out there. I like to add a little lemon zest to this mixture. I think it adds a nice bit of flavor and some pop. Get in there with your spatula. Make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. You really want to make sure this is mixed very well. I wish I could remember who made this blender because I would give them a shout out. Going in with just a little bit of heavy cream. Get everything off the edges. Nice thick consistency there, looking good. I cannot wait for you guys to try this recipe. All right, we're going into our cake pan here. Fill your crust up with all of that delicious cheesecake mixture we just made. Don't be shy. Looking good. Time to go into the oven for a couple hours and then you want to let that thing cool overnight. Preferably, that'll help your uh, consistency quite a bit. Then the next morning, you're gonna break out your cobbler that you made and top the cheesecake with that. Make sure to get the edges too. Man, that's looking good. Don't forget that crumble. Add some nice texture. Not to mention it's delicious. 
just evenly spread that out all over on your cheesecake. Get the edges with that as well. Pop that back in the fridge for about 30 minutes to let that set. And then my friends, it is time to unveil this beautiful, delicious peach cobbler cheesecake. Damn, damn, damn. That is food porn. Gotta have a moment of silence. Quick trademark money shot. Now it's time to slice this bad boy. Let's see what we got. Oh man. A beautiful slice of cheesecake. Really hope you guys enjoy this recipe. I know I'm about to. Let's take a bite. Oh, yes sir. What diet? All right guys, that's my recipe for peach cobbler cheesecake. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, and as always, thank you for your support.